Hey everyone, I'm really excited for today's video. Today I'm going to show you how to make custom figures with absolutely no paint. These are called kit bashes, and they are a lot of fun and a lot less scary when you're just getting started in customizing, because I know customizing can be quite intimidating, especially if you haven't ever done it before or if you're new to collecting. I know that uh, it's very scary to risk breaking your figures or ruining them, but hopefully this video will give you a little bit more confidence to give it a try for yourself. I like using hot water as opposed to a blow dryer, depending on the figure. If it's something durable, I'll just use the hot water. I like that I can let the figure soak and kind of do other stuff while it's doing that instead of having to like sit there and hold a blow dryer over parts of the figure but the reason we use heat is that it softens the plastic on the figures and it makes taking them apart and working with them a lot easier. I only soak the figures up unto the point that I need so in this case I only use about an inch of water because I'm just doing the head and the hands so we're gonna just soften up the neck pieces here but I always give it a little tug before I do anything because some of the figures just pop off just by hand and that saves you a lot of time but what happened here is the whole head and the neck peg came off and I want to use that neck peg so I'm gonna make sure it's fully submerged and just let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute and once that time has passed they are going to be a lot softer in the areas that have been heated so I use paper towels so I avoid burning my hands and you can see how easily that head just popped right off and then I'm gonna put the hands up just to soften the wrists here and in the meantime, I'm gonna grab the head with my needle nose pliers. You can get these at any hobby shop or online. And then we are gonna grab the head with the paper towel just to get a little bit more grip. And then I'm gonna grab the peg with the needle nose pliers and just pull straight out. And the hat popped off. I forgot that that was a separate piece, but there you go. And just gonna give it a quick fit test while the head is still warm. And it's a little bit too small to actually have any grip, but that actually is better. It's easier to work with, and we can just use some black tack later, which I will show you. Now, all of the hands are articulated on Black Series figures, and they have this really delicate wrist peg. So what I like to do is kind of sandwich the pliers around the peg. Okay, so that isn't... That's, that's what's supposed to not happen, which is the hand getting removed from the peg. And so what happens is when I try to pull this peg out on its own, it just ends up stretching the peg because when the plastic is softened, it is a little bit stretchier. So I kind of ruin the pegs here on the wrists. And that is one of the dangers of doing this is that it kind of softens all of the pieces. So it's gonna just separate at the weakest point. This isn't actually a deal breaking problem, but this is just a good example to show you how, you know, things can go wrong sometimes with customizing, but it's nothing we can't fix later. So same thing happened on this one. The thing is that over the years, Black Series figures have changed and they're engineering a lot. And so a lot of older figures versus newer figures, they all use different systems of articulation and pegs. And so you just really never know what you're gonna get based on like when the figure was made and that sort of thing. So we are gonna just ditch these pegs and just glue the hands directly onto the wrists. So this is how it is supposed to go when you remove a hand, you kind of pinch it around there and it pops off really clean and easy. This is a newer figure and it was very, very easy to get these off. And while we are in this stage, I'm just gonna remove this vest and put it in my fodder drawer. And then this belt, if we heated it up, it would slide right off over the hips. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it on the figure and toss them into my fodder storage. So this is literally a bin of just broken up action figure parts, very Sid from Toy Story. And uh, I'm just gonna throw that in here. This has accumulated quickly over the years. And then I have in my closet, just this extra storage here and I have it all labeled according to what kind of parts it is and that just helps me keep things straight. This is only something I started doing recently when things sort of got out of hand. Speaking of hands, I have a drawer right here and we will throw in those Hoth Trooper hands in case we ever need them. And getting back to our custom, I have this soaked to soften the neck here and then we're gonna just pop that neck piece right back in there and let's do a quick test fit to see how the head fits on the body. 
So it does cover the entire neck peg and it sits a, just a little bit too low so it looks a little bit silly. I'm gonna just see what happens when we put this scarf piece on. Yeah, that's not gonna work at all. Let's ditch that idea. So we're gonna come back to this later. This is an easy fix, but we will do this towards the end. First, I wanna get the hands onto the wrists here. So what I'm gonna do is set them up at an angle like this so that way they can just kinda sit upright while it's laying down. And we'll do a quick test fit here just to see how these hands are gonna go. I think these are gonna work just great. And then we're gonna use this magic combination of stuff that I was told about by Frederick's figures. And this has totally changed my life, both with making dioramas and with customizing. It is called Zappagap, it's a type of super glue, and Zip Kicker, which is an accelerator for the glue. And I didn't know this existed. And it's it works so well that it's almost a little bit scary. I'm always afraid of like hardcore gluing my fingers to something. Don't look at how messy my glue bottle is, but I'm gonna put one drop of glue just on the wrists there since that doesn't dry as fast and then with this kicker i'm just gonna pull the nozzle out completely and just put a couple drops on the hand here and then i'm gonna stick it into place and hold it and literally within like three seconds it is dry and it is hardened to the point where i can pick up the figure this stuff is magic it even makes like a little sizzling sound when you use it and i've even seen like a little bit of vapors come up from it i don't know what's happening please follow the instructions on the bottle and be careful with this stuff but you can see it's kind of this like magic tool. Especially when you have to glue things together that can't really sit in a position for a while without you manually holding it there. But both of these are already solidly locked in to the point where I can manipulate them and put a weapon in without worrying about them coming unglued. So here we go. I probably should have rotated the left hand a little bit so I can kind of cradle the gun from underneath, but these are looking pretty good so far. Next, I'm going to apply the head using some black tack. This is just a reusable putty. I like that it's black instead of the usual white putty. It's definitely a little bit stickier and gummier. And if you're not careful, it can stain the figures if it comes into contact with like a figure's face or something. So I always use less than I think I need and stick it right on the neck peg there and just sort of filling that hole in the head. And actually, I'm just gonna apply it directly to the inside of the head to avoid it overflowing a little bit if we were to just stick the head onto the putty itself. So we're just gonna do a quick test here. It looks a little high and it throws up the proportions of the figures are a little bit, but then if we just kind of squeeze it down onto the neck peg, just like this, it'll stay in place. We might have to remove some of the putty if it, if it keeps forcing itself back up, but I just kind of mix around with it here and play with it until it feels like it is at a reasonable height and feels proportionately accurate. But just like that, you have a brand new figure that can fit in perfectly on your gaming great shelf or with your Battlefront Troopers. So let us continue these easy customs with this Luke Skywalker Stormtrooper figure. This is the old stormtrooper body which if you're new to collecting you may have heard people talk about before saying like the old stormtrooper body the old clone trooper body why are they still using this mold blah 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 so let me show you the difference in these two molds because it took me a while to see it like until i actually set them side by side this you know back when i was like newer to collecting and it's one of those things that once you kind of see the difference you can't unsee it and so let me show you how much of a difference we have in the old figure versus the new figure. Look at this, these are like, these look like two different toy lines. So this is the new Stormtrooper mold that started in about 2020 with the Mandalorian Stormtrooper, and it is what they have been using for almost all of their Stormtrooper figures moving forward. And I would love to see a new Luke Skywalker and Han Solo in Stormtrooper disguise figures on these newer bodies. And until we get that, we will have to do it ourselves. I really like using this Yavin Luke Skywalker head. This is a really good likeness to Mark Hamill compared to the other Black Series figures. And I think it's just like an overall easy figure to get. These are at a local comic shop here for about 10 bucks. They've been there for years and hopefully you can find him pretty cheap online and it makes a great alternate head sculpt for a lot of different Luke Skywalker figures. So we are going to bring in our cup of hot microwaved water that we just popped out and we're gonna stick the stormtrooper in head first to soften up that neck peg and just get that helmet off. So after about 30 seconds, we can pop it out, watch for drips, don't burn yourself. And I'm gonna use this paper towel just to get a good grip on it and I'm just gonna pull. I would love to get just the helmet and the head sculpt off and not pull the neck peg out, but I don't know if that is going to be possible. So let's just see if I can 
grab the neck peg with these pliers and pull just the helmet off, but I don't want to warp the helmet too much, so I'm just kind of using a medium amount of pressure here, but it looks like the easiest thing to do is going to be just pop the whole thing off. You saw how easy it came off once it was heated up, and just pull this part out, which is actually proving to be surprisingly difficult, so I'm just going to let that sit for a little longer. And it's nice because this gets to cool off in the meantime because you want one of the pieces to be hard when you're trying to reconnect them because if they're both soft they'll just kind of smush into each other and not really click into place. So let's try this again and try to get the peg out. We're just going to kind of use like a spinny motion. And I grab it from the back because I don't want the teeth of the pliers to leave any marks on the neck peg. And then this is going to pop right on real easy because it's still warm. And I have this spare head already set aside, and I want to get that neck peg out since we don't need two neck pegs, and that will go right on the other peg. So I'm going to gently pick it up with the pliers and grab it with the paper towels and just kind of wiggle this neck peg out. And actually, it's giving me a little difficulty, so it goes back in. And then after about a minute, we're going to try this again, and it should pop out pretty easily. There we go. Okay, nice satisfying little pop. And then let's see what happens when we pop this onto this neck peg. I think we're going to have an issue here. Yeah, that neck is way too long. He looks like he's a Kaminoan. But that's an easy fix, and we are going to come back to this at the end of the video. But let's stick that neck peg back on, and let's bring in our Han Solo figure. This is the new updated Power of the Force re-release from, I think, 2021. And this one actually, the head pops right off without any force, so always give that a try before you start heating up your figures. But you can see we're having the same issue here in terms of the extended neck height, and so that's no good. It looks very silly, but don't worry, it's an easy fix. The issue is that the neck peg is just too long, and so we're just going to have to take that out. So we're going to have to separate these two pieces, so I'm going to use two sets of needle nose pliers. This is getting more expensive by the minute. And going to have to pull both pieces at the same time. And now we have just our neck peg, which is still hot and should pop right back on. And then you'll see once we set the head on, it is a much better looking proportion here and should be all we need. And this actually works great for both of them. And so we're going to just repeat this process for two different stormtroopers. And then we're just going to use a little bit more black tack to hold that head in place. And I also like to put the black tack towards the back of the neck peg just a little bit as well as on top. So that way it grips the back of the head a little bit and gives you a little bit more hold and a little bit better articulation. And then we can just stick the stormtrooper helmet in his hand like he just removed it. We don't even have to remove that head sculpt because we're not really going to be sticking this over the head or else we would just use a normal stormtrooper and we just did all that work. And now I'm actually going to put it back together just to show you that, you know, you can still play around with your figures. You can separate the pieces to use for figure photography or something. And then when you're done, you can get the figures back to where they were, so long as you don't break any pieces in the process. So we're going to heat that up. We're going to get this neck peg back in. And I use the floor or like the counter when I do this. And I'll show you how that works just to, it's just an easier way to get it in. And I'll use the needle nose pliers and just kind of push straight down onto it until it pops in. Sorry for the blur here. Okay, there you go, that went back in. And then we're gonna pop the helmet out. And as we're doing this, the neck peg is cooling, so it's getting a little bit sturdier. And then the helmet should pop right back on very easily. And actually, I'm gonna do the same trick where I do it face down and just use the table as an extra pressure point and now we've got our stormtrooper good as new you can see how soft the helmet is now from heating it up but we're gonna make sure that's in a decent shape and then just let that cool and there are a ton of figures that you can do this with just to enhance them slightly or expand your displayability options i never liked the snow speeder luke head with the bald cap underneath and so if you go ahead and use that yavin luke this is an easy head swap these figures came out around the same time they look very good together when you mix the parts and just switch that head out and then yeah you can display him without his helmet and he won't look crazy and then I did that same process of just using hot water to heat the heads up, and I made these custom figures. This Rebel Fleet Trooper using a stone called Steve Austin head that is also just held on by Tacky. And then this J. Jonah Jameson Imperial Officer. I did do a little bit of black paint on his glove in order to get that effect, but otherwise it is just a simple head swap. But anyway, 
there you go. Check out that Han Solo hand. Um, I hope this inspired you guys to play around with your collection a little bit, maybe make something new, and I will see you next time.